Good evening, everyone. I'm J.C. Mullinax. I'm one of the administrators here with Brothers in Christ Christian Ministries. Uh, we have a Facebook page that you're probably watching from, or we also have a YouTube page. Uh, we upload all our videos that we do live on Facebook. Um, very little to no editing at all. Uh, and then we put them on our YouTube page. And that is a brand new YouTube page we're starting to upload now. And you can find that at Brothers and Sisters hyphen, letter N, hyphen Christ is uh, where our YouTube page is located. So if I was you guys and you want to not use Facebook or you want to share with someone who doesn't uh, use Facebook and you want to share these videos with your, uh, your family, your friends, and your loved ones, uh, just go to the YouTube page and just hit that like button, hit that share button, and uh, just be sharing the gospel. That simple. All right, tonight... Uh, we're going to get into uh, the fourth part of our series. Uh, we're in chapter five of Romans. Uh, we're going to be on hope of glory uh, tonight. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at Romans five. We've been in uh, verses one through 10. And uh, we've been camped out uh, for the first three or four weeks uh, of October, we were camped out on the third word uh, that in Romans, and that word is justification. And uh, we decided to go from there and start with the three parts of salvation. We thought that would uh, be appropriate, and we looked at justification, uh, made righteous. We looked at sanctification, uh, being set apart, okay, your walk with the Lord, your daily walk, and we looked at glorification. Uh, that's when you're taken out of this world, out of this sinful body, and you're living uh, in your glorified body with the Lord Jesus. Okay, and then through those verses, one toward the end of one, all the way through six, we have extracted the six articles of salvation. And uh, we looked, uh, let me go ahead and name those real quick. Uh, the first one that we looked at uh, a few weeks ago was peace with God. We looked at before we're saved, we're enemies of God. And then when we get justified, we place our trust in Jesus, then we're not enemies no longer. Uh, then we're, we're part of Christ. Christ in me, uh, uh, Christ in me, you in Christ. I'll get that out here just in a minute correctly. Uh, our second thing we looked at uh, the other week was standing in grace. This was our last lesson. Uh, we looked at uh, we looked at common grace. We looked at saving grace. We looked at sustaining grace, and we looked at serving grace. We split that down, and we we saw how uh, that consistently that we're a living in a realm uh, of grace when you're saved. And tonight. We're going to be looking at uh, the full assurance of hope, our hope in glory. Uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 5, and we're going to be looking at uh, verses uh, 3 and 4 tonight. Now, I'm going to ask everyone, uh, if they can, to please turn to Romans 5. Uh, I originally said 2 through 4. It's going to be 2 through 5 tonight. Uh, and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version uh, Bible. So I'm going to just ask for you to open up your Bibles and turn to Romans 5. And we're going to read these verses and we're going to look at uh, the assurance of hope tonight. Okay. All right. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulations work patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because of love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given into us. So tonight, we're going to look at hope. Now, I'm going to be out and back. I've got a laptop. I'm monitoring our live feed on Facebook tonight. And uh, I have my tablet where I have all my notes. So you're going to be seeing my eyes kind of move out and back. Uh, and I'm not um, a very elegant speaker, okay? Uh, I'm fairly new at this, so I'm just going to ask you just to be patient with me uh, and be praying for me, be praying for the message tonight. Uh, just be praying that the Lord, uh, if something that I say is wrong, that uh, matter of fact, he uh, will change that around and uh, make that sound uh, uh, the correct way, okay? So just be praying for me, all right? So we're looking at hope tonight. 
And we're going to look at a few things that I've got written down on what hope is, some things that I've jotted down. Uh, and then we're going to go into the scripture and we're going to look at what biblical hope is, how hope and faith correspond with each other. And we're going to go in and we're going to go start through it and seeing the process of how hope is produced in us, uh, which the Bible told us when we read through the uh, other verses earlier. OK, uh, we're talking about sufferings and tribulations. All right. That brings forth patience and that brings forth character, which brings forth full assurance of hope. There's a process. <clears throat> and after tonight's message, we're actually going to stop. And then we're going to look at the sanctification process uh, next Monday. I think it's going to be appropriate for us to look at sanctification because we have spent a whole uh, lot of time on the justification process. But I kind of want to go and stop here uh, for next week, and I want to look at the, uh, the sanctification process. I think that would be best for us to do. Because I want to be able to, I want y'all guys, the listeners, the Christians, uh, even the non-Christians that's looking at this, I want them to be able to see the difference between the Christian and the world. All right, sanctification is set apart, okay? And we're going to be looking at that real heavily next week. But right now, let's get back into hope, okay? Some things that I've written down about hope. Uh, one, hope is a confident expectation and desire for something in the future. I desire, my hope is, and I desire for everyone who's hearing this message tonight that's lost will get saved, and for the ones who are listening will grow in their walk with the Lord. That's what my hope is, okay? Uh, two, confidence in a future event. The highest degree of well-founded expectations of good as a hope founded on God's gracious promise, a scriptural sense. Okay, if we look at the promises, there is no more promises that are coming. All the promises in God's word are already there. Our hope, okay, we're going to see the difference between worldly hope and biblical hope here in a minute. But uh, our hope is in all the promises that's already been promised. We're promised, for an example, that Christ is coming back. That is a promise. We hope in that. That's a certain certainty promise, okay, that the Lord is coming back. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. All right, number three, an opinion or a belief not amounting to certainty, okay, but grounded on substantial evidence. The Christian indulges a hope that his sins are pardoned. We know that our sins are pardoned. Okay, the Bible tells us. All right, we place our trust in Jesus. We confess with our mouth. Okay, from, from the mouth there is confession. All right, and then we ask the Lord to forgive us. Then we place our trust in Jesus. In this we know that we have our sins pardoned. The Bible tells us, um, that our sins are tossed from as far as the east and the west. That says that in the book of Psalms. And in Micah 9, verse 7, uh, it tells us that our sins are taken to the far depths of the sea and they're buried that no man can see. So we do stand on that hope, okay, that our sins have been pardoned. Uh, and also, too, <laughs> my German shepherd's walking in. Uh, from time to time, she may jump up on me, may want to uh, pee or give me some sugar or something like that. So uh, just just please be bearing with that also. I appreciate that. Um, now we're going to look at three worldly uh, views of hope, okay? And I'm gonna, we're going to use some sentences, uh, some statements, some examples, and uh, we're going to start putting this thing together, okay, on, on what the difference between the worldly hope and the godly hope is the biblical hope. Okay, three examples of how the world understands hope. Hope is a desire for something good in the future. Like, for instance, the children might say, I hope Daddy uh, gets home early tonight so we can play kickball after supper before his meeting. In other words, they desire for him to get home early so they can experience the good thing, namely to play kickball with their father. 
as we look at that, we see some uncertainty in that. The children, they hope. They don't know for sure that their dad's coming home. Their dad has not phoned home. They have not received any emails. Uh, most kids, they're on Facebook. They probably haven't got any Facebook updates. Uh, they're just hoping uh, that their um, that their uh, their hope uh, is going to happen. It, it's an uncertain hope. Okay, I've got things going on on my phone and on the computer. So, like I said, just forgive me uh, uh, as things happen. All right. So we're going to look at number two. Um, hope is the good thing in the future that we are desiring. Let's look at this. We say our hope that Jim will arrive safely. In other words, Jim's safe arrival is the object here of hope. We're hoping that Jim is going to arrive safely, but we truly don't know that for a fact. As Christians, well, just as people in general, just strike that. As people in general, the world says things like that. Even Christians say things like, I know sometimes I'll use that word hope. Boy, I sure do hope my wife makes it, makes it to work okay. My prayer is that. But uh, do I specifically know that she's going to make it to work safe? That may be the time that the Lord comes and gets her. Uh, that we don't know. But my hope uh, and her hope is, is that we know that we're saved, right? And we know that whatever happens, whenever our time is up, we know that our last breath here on earth is going to be uh, our, uh, our next uh, thing that we're going to see in heaven, okay, is, is the glory of God. We're going to see God on the throne because I'm saved. My wife is saved. All three of my children are saved. So when we say our hope, uh, I'm saying that I'm right with the Lord, okay? But here, what we're seeing, we're seeing that Jim, uh, we're hoping that Jim's going to make it. So there's some uncertainty in this, okay? So let's move on here. Uh, hope is a reason why our hope might need to pass or come to pass. We say a good tailwind is our only hope on arriving on time. In other words, the tailwind is the reason we may in fact achieve the future good that we desire and our hope. Okay, so as we look at this, our, we achieve the future good that we desire. Our we, our desire is to get there. It looks like we're going to get there because the tailwind has picked up. But is the tailwind going to continue after it picks up? Say that we've got two hours to be where we need to be. Our tailwind only lasts an hour. Does that mean that we're going to make it? No. At the beginning, we were saying we hope that was a future event. We hope we make it because we see it, but we don't know for sure. So again, in that scenario, we see uh, uncertainty in, in that hope view too, okay? Um, now, we see hope in three different senses, okay? That one sense, a desire for something in the future that we talked about. Two, the thing in the future that we desire. And number three, the, the basis or reason of thinking that our desire uh, may be fulfilled. So those are the three senses that we see in hope. So, Let's go ahead and look at some scriptural evidence of hope, okay? Now, what I want you to do, I want you to open up your Bible to Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going, uh, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to be in verses 9 through 12 tonight. That is Hebrews 6, 9 through 12. I'm going to give you just a moment just to get there, and um, we're going to be reading it uh, the, just to give you a little heads up as you're finding it. Uh, verse 11 is going to talk about the hope. Then we're going to see a transition uh, there in the faith. And then we're going to get right into uh, the hope and the faith. Uh, they do correspond with a little bit with each other. So let's go ahead and read Hebrews 6, 9 through 12. But beloved, now here that word beloved is a transition. Okay, at the beginning of chapter 6, he's talking to the lost man. And now he's talking to us. He transitions here in these verses. In, in uh, verse number nine, he transitions, uh, my beloved, and my beloved means to you and I, if you're a Christian and you're saved and you're justified, he's talking to us. We are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through we thus speak. There's more to salvation than what we think there is, a lot more. 
For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, okay? Which ye have shrewd toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shrew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope and to the end. So what is the writer of the, the book of Hebrews? What is he telling us? Well, in other words, there's three words that we want to look at. We want to look at the word zeal, the word rest, and the word field, okay? With all the zeal of the past that enabled you to work in love in the name of Christ, with all that zeal, keep on pursuing the full assurance of hope to the end. There is no fight. There is no quest. There is no challenge. There is no war more urgent than this. Keep your hope hot. Here, Paul is telling us to keep that hope hot. Have that zeal. That zeal is the driving force of our desire to serve Christ. That zeal, having that excitement. Sometimes I like to use this way of describing zeal. When I first got saved, I was like a souped up Lamborghini. I had it all. I had the pipes. I had the engine. I had the transmission. My, my rear end ratio was, was set up correctly. Uh, I had nitrous on it. Boy, I was souped up, buddy. I was ready to go, but I had nowhere to race. But I still carried that zeal, that volume, uh, all the way through uh, to my present day walk with Christ. Now, have I always uh, have been lifted up? Have I always been encouraged? Well, no, we've all get discouraged. We've all had troubles. But I still had that zeal, that volume, that driving force to be able to serve Christ. Uh, let's look at the word rest. All right. He wants us, Jesus wants us to rest in the full assurance of uh of our hope. And we look at Hebrews 4. It talks about biblical rest. It talks about when you get saved, you enter into this, this rest. Okay. There's no more struggling. Now, listen, I'm not talking about we don't struggle. Okay. But there's really a lot less struggling than we have. We're no longer uh, at war with God. That number one article, we're now at peace. We've entered into that rest. Now we're starting to see the skeleton of the whole thing come together, okay? Uh, and this lesson tonight and, to, and next Monday, as we see, is going to start adding meat to the skeleton. So if you've just had the, uh, the buzzer go off in your mind, the light bulb go off, and now you're starting to see uh, the skeleton come together, uh, that's what it's designed to do. And this is what we're going to see tonight is the skeleton and putting a little bit of meat to that skeletal work of the body, Okay. So as we're looking, we enter into that rest, okay? The, our full assurance of hope. That's why we have that hope is because we've entered into that biblical rest. We're saved, all right? Um, so you will live out. Now, when we enter this rest, what happens is the Lord has designed this for us to live out through that overflow of love that he has for us. You ever heard people say, I just don't know what my will, I don't know what God's will for my life is. Uh, I don't know if I should be a pastor. I don't know if I should be a youth minister, a music minister. Should I be a missionary? I mean, for the young Christians, we hear that all the time, okay? But you know what the Bible tells us? And this is where the rubber meets the road. I want you to listen, okay? God's will is for you to surrender and to have an everlasting loving relationship with Christ. That's his will. Everything else, as we enter into that rest, Hebrews 4, as we enter into that rest, everything flows through that everlasting love relationship. Your number one ministry, your family, your wife, number one, all right? Uh, your, your overflow, your walk, it flows into that. Then it flows into your children. Then it flows into your uh, your job, then it flows into your outside family. Uh, it keeps going and going. And if you've noticed, ministry is a little bit further down. But um, this everlasting love relationship, 
Everything flows through that, okay? It draws you closer to the Word. It draws you closer to Him. Uh, it, 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 it gives you that zeal to be able to go out and to be able to continue with that volume of Christ in you. That's exactly what that rest is, and that's exactly what your calling is. It's just to follow Jesus. Everything else is him in and through you. And uh, you guys are going to see that as we get through this Romans 5 by the end of December. Uh, Danny Parton is going to be coming in and he's going to be discussing chapter 6. Okay, and chapter 6 is really good. And uh, we've titled that one, or he's titled that one, Our Oneness in Christ. Um, we're going to see Romans 6 is focused on the Christian and we see a trans uh, a transversion uh, from Romans 5 to Romans 6, Romans 5, the first, the third word in the verse talks about justification. So now this is where the rubber meets the road and we're starting to see this build up, okay? Let's go down to uh, the third word. We used, we said the word filled. I'm going to read this. Uh, your heart is filled to overflowing capacity. It's that volume that we were talking about earlier. With the rock of solid assurance that your hope will not disappoint and that your relationship with God is unshakably certain. There is no limit to the joy and satisfaction and spiritual success that you can experience. And that's kind of hitting on our second, uh, on our second point, standing in grace. Grace is immeasurable. And here he is, he's talking about being filled with the Spirit, that solid rock of Christ, our relationship, our rest in Him. Um, it, it just It's just so amazing on how all that works out. You know, uh, we talk about the zeal, we talk about the rest, we talk about being filled. And when you've got these three going on, this is when hope starts to build. Okay, we know that we know that we know that we're saved. All right, there's no doubt when you've placed your trust in Jesus, there's no, there's no doubt that you're saved, right? We have that hope, that certainty, that zeal. We have that, we have that, re that knowing of rest that we're, that we're sitting in. And then we know that we're filled, okay? We know that Christ lives in me. And I live in Christ. We're one. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Uh, knowing that we have that hope. The world sees hope as an uncertain, uncertainty, as we saw. And now that we're starting to look at these scriptures, we're starting to see hope as being a certain thing. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm going to talk about the full assurance of hope. I want to give a definition. Um, again, I've gone through here and I've jotted some notes down. Um, you're going to see my eyes go down a little bit, but I'm going to read this down to you, and then we'll come back and we'll expound on it. Uh, now, what does the full assurance of hope really mean? It means hope which is fully assured. Hope which is confident. Confidence is number one, okay? Uh, you've got to have confidence in that hope, that confidence that we're going to see uh, in Hebrews 9 here in a little bit. We're going to go back and read that and break that down to to, to look at some hope, okay, and faith. Faith and hope is one. But uh, we've got to have that confidence, and our confidence is in Christ, okay? Hope that has moral certainty in it. It is not finger-crossing hope. It's not one of these that we have our fingers and we cross and we hope, we hope, we hope, we hope. Kind of kind of like that baseball player back in the 92, is it 91 or 92 World Series with the Braves, Francisco Cabrera was up to bat, uh, and I believe it was a full count. And I was sitting there and I was just hoping and hoping and hoping. But my hope wasn't there because I didn't know this Francisco Cabrera. He wasn't a Sid Bream or a Fred McGriff, uh, a Trouser. He wasn't a Justin, uh, uh, David Justice or Otis Nixon, uh, any of those guys. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't know him from Adam's apple. And my hope was, uh, and it was uncertain hope. It was hope that I had my fingers crossed hoping he'd hit that ball. And 50-50, uh, he hit it. Boy, he hit it. Sid Breen came all the way from first all the way to home, slid in and beat them Pirates and made it to the World Series. Uh, they didn't win the World Series, sadly, if I understand it correctly. I may be misunderstanding that. Uh, my memory serves me right. But they went on to lose the World Series. But you know what? That's exactly what finger-crossing hope is, okay? Um, we're going to continue looking. It is not a lip-biting gaze as you watch the place kicker 
for a field goal in the last 10 seconds when you are down by two points. Do y'all remember the, uh, the Super Bowl between the Bills and the Cowboys? Scott Norwood was up. Um, I forget where they were at, but Scott Norwood had one chance to make that field goal, and he missed it. And everybody now remembers uh, Norwood uh, missing that kick. He was an excellent kicker, but he missed it. See, we were we were all on our hands and our knees, uh, and our and our nails, biting our nails down. We were sitting there, and we had our our hope, which is uh, not. We wouldn't focused on uh, uh, is it going to happen or not. Um, it was uncertain hope. It wasn't full certainty on this hope. Okay, but we were all just biting our nails and biting our fingers and just hoping and praying. He kicked that ball, and we all put our head down and said, "Oh man, he missed it." It, it was uncertainty. We did not know. Hope's not like that, okay? Um, in fact, we're going to look at verse 12. In fact, 12 implies that hope and faith are, are almost simultaneously. They're all they're the same, okay? Notice the connection. We're going to notice the connection to verse 11. 11 says, go hard after full assurance of hope, okay? Verse 11 is hope. 12 says the result of the pursuit of hope is that you will be like those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Pursue hope so that you can be like men of faith. And that's where we're going to come into our next scripture here in just a minute, uh, looking, at, uh, looking at faith, okay? And we're going to look at hope. As we look at, we look at faith, faith is more of a bigger object. It's more of a, a greater idea because we look at faith, it covers the past. We see it working in the past and we see it working in the present. But hope is like a necessity, like it's necessary for faith. That gives us the hope for the future. Okay, and we're going to see that. Well, that was my dog. She'd done something to her water bowl, if y'all heard that. Now, let's go ahead and move down into Hebrews 11. I said nine. I meant Hebrews 11. And we're going to be looking at the first three verses. This here is, going, is the best way, biblically, for me to explain the same thing, uh, or the this, dissemony this, this between uh, faith and hope, okay? Now, let's look at this. Now, faith, Hebrews 11, 1, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, that's verses 1, 2, and 3. So here's how I would uh, paraphrase that verse. Wherever there is full assurance of hope, there is faith. Did you hear that? Wherever there is full assurance of hope, there's always, always going to be faith. Faith is the full assurance of hope. Biblical faith is a confident expectation and a desire for good things in the future. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to move on. And what I want to look at, because we're running a little bit uh Slow on, or a little bit uh, slow on time, excuse me. Um, I want to make sure this video stays within about the 30, 35 minute uh, realm. So we're going to go ahead and continue and we're going to move on. But right now, I'm kind of hoping you're getting the idea. I want you to understand what the full assurance of biblical hope is. I want you to know the difference between uh, uncertainty hope of what we talk about here in this uh, worldly realm. And I want to talk about the biblical hope. I'm hoping that you're seeing that that there is a certainty to this biblical hope that we're reading uh, that the Lord through Paul is talking about in the fifth book of Romans. Okay, the believer's ultimate destiny, destiny is to be uh, the glory of God. Okay, that's when we die that our body is glorified uh, and then we're out of this sinful body, this sinful world, and we're uh, in that eternal resting place, heaven uh, with the Lord, okay? Uh, Romans 8, 29. Okay, if you can turn to Romans 8, 29 real quick. For whom he did foreknew. That's talking about us, all right? 
we being saved, being justified, okay? Um, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, okay? That he might be the firstborn among many brethren, moreover whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and him whom also, uh, and whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he glorified. All right, John 17, 22. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. That's our hope, okay? When we're saved during our sanctification process, okay, we know that we're one with him. Jesus is in me and I in Christ, okay? That oneness that we're talking about. All right, 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, all right, we're talking about the hope of glory here. Uh, we have that hope, that certainty, that full assurance that when it's done and over with, that we're going to be with the Lord. Okay, Philippians 3.20. For our converse, uh, conversation is in heaven. Oh, our conversion, my bad. <laughs> I'm having a hard time reading tonight. For our conversion is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Our hope, again, that's talking about the glory. Oh, we, we know that he knows us. Because our hope is in our salvation. We remember, we know when we got saved. We remember what that change felt like. We know what that rest turned into. Charles Stanley said one time um, that when he was, he was preaching, he had the whole weight of the church upon his shoulders, okay? Now, I'm not going to live it off subject, but just follow me. And when he took that, uh, when he finally gave that over to the Lord, now, that, that's different than salvation, I know. But when he finally give all this stuff to the Lord, because all this stuff that goes on in our life, it's not meant to be on our shoulders. Our bodies, physical bodies, are not designed to handle this. And Charles Stanley said, when I give that to the Lord, he said, my definition, my view of hope changed. He goes, just like when I got saved and they entered into that uh, that salvational rest that I know that I was saved and I was going to live eternity with him. He said, but that other rest of me doing things in the flesh, not realizing that Christ was in me and I was in Christ. Yes, we've read that before. And yes, we, we may understand that a little bit, but do you fully understand what that rest comes to? Talking about you and Christ, Christ in you, Okay. Uh, Charles Stanley, when he finally started doing, stopped doing things in the flesh and started doing things God's way, uh, he said his church began to flourish, uh, and he just had the biggest smile, and uh, his zeal returned back to him. Uh, I always remember that from Charles Stanley's messages. Um, now, our second point on, on uh, biblical hope uh, examples in the Bible, okay, to bring all this together is now that we see because Christ himself secures it. All right, so we've seen the hope of us being glorified, okay? Now we're going to look at the hope of him securing that hope in our salvation. We look at Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, 1 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. I'm going to read that again. And that's the first opening, okay, and I meant to bring that up. That's, uh, if you notice Paul's writings, Paul typically, uh, my hair's messed up here. <laughs> um, Paul typically um, opens up in, in this format, and uh, he doesn't disappoint here in 1 Timothy. But he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, 
by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. He's basically saying that uh, Christ is my hope. That's the reason why I'm here. Is because of the hope that I believe in that is certainty hope. Uh, that's why I'm here talking with you, Timothy. Okay, without and certain promises of the Word of God, the believer would have no basis for hope. All right, let's look at Romans 15, 4. For whosoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Boy, that's saying a lot right there. I'm going to reread that one more time. Uh, for what for whatsoever things were written for a time we were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort through the scriptures might have hope well that's why we have the hope Christ is the scripture he's the he is the written word we see that in John 1 1 okay but that our hope is in the scriptures like we talked about earlier those promises that we were talking about um, that we're standing on that's in the scripture, that is our hope. That's exactly what we're talking about here. And that's what uh, um, Paul was talking about. Uh, let's look at Psalms 119.81. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Okay. Uh, his soul faints, but his hope's in that word. Uh, again, those are those are written in stone. God does not lie. He cannot lie. That's one thing he can't do is he can't lie. So our hope, knowing that God's not going to lie to us, knowing that those promises are true, we've seen it um, come to pass throughout history. And if you're living in this present day and time, um, if you're watching this video 20 years down the road, uh, it may not make it 20, to be honest with you. Uh, we see that God's promises uh, from 1948 with Israel becoming a nation to what we're seeing now. Everything is just lining up with Scripture. And that ought to encourage you. That ought to bring forth the, the, the certainty of hope uh, in your walk with, uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, let's look at Psalms 119. Let's just go down to the 114th verse. Um, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. He's got that word resonated in his heart. All right, let's go to Ephesians 2.12, the, the book of Ephesians. You've heard me say before. It is my absolute favorite book, and I love the scripture we're about to read here, okay? That at that time, ye were without Christ, okay? We were lost, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers of the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. There was no certainty. Uh, but there was really full certainty that if you were alienated and you was an enemy of God, if there was no peace in your life, you were going to hell. You are going to a place that was created for the devil and his angels. It wasn't even created for you. But the full assurance of hope that we're talking about here is that you're going to burn that you're going to go and you're going to live uh, everlasting torment in a place that you're not even supposed to be in, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to uh, Jeremiah 14.8. Oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shoutest thou be as a stranger in the land and as a warefaring man that turneth aside tarrying for a night? All right, sufferings. A word, this is this is what the word sufferings, okay? Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. You've got to forgive me for a second. But see, that's where our hope is right there, okay? Uh, what I started going into was the next two verses. Uh, and uh, I lied to you. I told you uh, next week that we're going to be going through the sanctification process. Let's go ahead and put that off to the week next, okay? The first week of December. Um, I want to continue uh, in uh, talking about hope as we look back. We're going to be able to see that process that the Lord takes us through uh, to, to help build uh, our hope, okay? That's kind of the way I'm looking at it, and that's going to lead in uh, to our sanctification 
uh, process. I want to look very diligently on that right there. Uh, and we're going to end it right here for now. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming up. All right. I want to thank you for listening. Uh, this is going to be on the Brothers and uh, Sisters uh, Facebook page, and we're going to upload this uh, to um, uh, our YouTube page, and you can uh, see it there if you want to, and you can forward it and uh, send it to your friends, uh, your family, and your coworkers. Um, but we do have uh, some things that I want you to, uh, to go through. <clears throat> I want you to continue reading through chapter 5 of Romans, okay? It's an everyday process from the first word to the last word, first verse to the last verse, five, all the way through for the rest of this month in November, okay? Uh, we've been discussing that. Um, now, also, too, we're going to be sharing our testimonies here uh, pretty soon, all right? And we're doing it in a three-minute increment. Uh, I want you guys to be able to be able to discuss and tell us in one minute what you was like before Christ. Then I want you to spend one minute telling us how you got saved. What was that process like for you? What was it like leading up to that? And then I want you to lead it on your third minute, okay? I want you to look and tell us and put together uh, what God's doing for you now. Uh, and you ask, well, why are we doing that in the middle of a uh, Romans 5 study? Well, there's a reason for it, and you can see. Um, now that things are being put together, okay, we're seeing what we were, what uh, justification is all about. We're seeing what ju what sanctification is all about, and we're looking at glorification at the end of this chapter. Uh, we're going to be uh, studying on that too. Um, there's a lot of people, believe it or not, that doesn't understand the three parts of salvation. They don't understand the six articles of salvation, things that we get when we're saved. Okay, it tells us in the book of Corinthians uh, that a lot of the Christians, uh, including myself, we can all say that we are, uh, a lot of us are on the milk. Uh, we're still on that bottle. And here we are 30, 40, 50 years old, 60 years old. Uh, and we've been saved for 30, 40, 50 years. And uh, we're still desiring that milk. We're not on the meat. And this is what we're here doing today is that, uh, or through this whole next few months, we're on this Romans 5. Moving into Romans 6 with Danny Parton in January and February, uh, we're going to start putting some meat. This is a good discipleship uh, study here, okay? Um, now listen, brothers in Christ, we're here for you, all right? Uh, I want you guys to know, I want you to comment, I want you to know that I love you, and we're praying for you, but I also want you to put some comments down there in the bottom. I want you to tell me uh, what you've learned. I want you to tell me, uh, and I get this a lot, uh, some of the words that I pronounce, pronounce wrong, no matter how much I pronounce those words, I still get a little nervous and I pronounce them wrong, okay? So help me pronounce those words, uh, and, and y'all guys, uh, if I've made any mistakes, tell me, okay? Let's talk about it. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm fairly new. I, I've been a Christian for 20-something uh, years, okay? I've been saved. I've always shared my faith. And I love the Lord. But this is something new. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, okay? So y'all guys help me with this. So put down in the comments what you've learned and uh, share with us a little bit about how the Lord saved you. All right? Thank you, and God bless you.